Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Safira, and I'm going to be interviewing Jim Charles today. Many of you know him as our main channeler with Human Colony. Uh, Yukolo is short for that. Many of you know the name Yukolo. And Jim began channeling in 2013, and we're going to talk about that and his progression. First, I want to give a little background. Uh, Jim has life experience in many areas. He's very eclectic. And uh, we, we, part of that is business management, a Bible scholar, musician, Reiki master teacher, and priest. He's a priest in the order of Melchizedek. And of course, he's a channeler of extraterrestrials, angels, ascended masters, and all sorts of interesting other beings. So, hello, Jim. Hello. <laughs> so, I met Jim back in 2014. And uh, when I started, got introduced to the um, Human Colony website. And what I was so impressed by when I first got to know Jim, before he was even doing much public channeling, was his service to other people. He was always running off, doing some volunteer work somewhere. There were so many people who needed his energy healing and his time. And he never wanted to ask anything for what he was doing. And I always thought that was a very admirable. And Jim just has this personality, <laughs> which is very approachable and very kind and full of humor. And so I thought for those of you who don't know him as well, since you might be new to Human Colony, we would do an interview today. So welcome again, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I would like to just do a few fun facts in the beginning because there's, uh, I asked some people if they have any questions for you. So one of the questions is, um, what's your favorite food? <laughs> Actually, I have several favorite foods. If you look at me, I'm a big person. So I, I have a lot of favorite foods, but some of them are, are, are Italian. I like linguine and clam sauce, spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, these kinds of things are really yummy to me. I love pastas and I love Thai food. So. Mm. Um, I'm okay. really big into uh, food. In yes, general. yes, Th Thai food is awesome. And I have an Italian background and food is love. <laughs> Good food is love to the Italians. Okay, thank you. So what's your favorite color? It changes, believe it or not, as by the season sometimes, but purple right now, but I really like aquamarine. And there are some times when I just love oranges and yellows. So mm. I really do, I'm really not partial to a, a color for a long period of time. I, it sort of changes with, the, how, with my mood and my feelings. Okay, and thank you. And if you wanted to be put back into the matrix as a particular person, if you know the movie, this one guy wanted to go back into the matrix and he decided he wanted to be a famous um, music producer or movie producer, he wanted to have this or that. Would you want to be put back in any kind of a different personage or level as you are now? Well, I would have loved to see what it would have been like to be a rock and roll star. I really did a lot of music for a long time. and. Mm -hmm. One of my great friends, Derek, did it along with me. And we just had such a really, really good time with it. And music is just part of who I am. It's part of the fabric of my being. And so I think that if I would have wanted to try something, it would have tr I wanted, would have wanted to try being a rock star or in the, the music business somewhere as a writer. I loved writing music and mm -hmm. I loved um, performing it as well. Oh, great. Thank you. I've listened to some of your music and it is awesome. So yes, I hope you get back into that. And, and maybe I can sell those CDs for you for, for a percentage. <laughs> <laughs> They're oh, so my, great. My, uh, sales they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be more out in the public. It's, it, they're amazing. So what's your favorite musical band right now? Uh, a band that no one has ever heard of, mm -hmm. uh, probably, uh, and if you have, you are into progressive music. 
It's called Spock's Beard. Say that again more clearly. Spock's Beard. Okay. Oh, Spock's Beard. Oh, it's true. I have never heard of that. Yeah. But I like the group XTC as well from England, and they're no longer together, but they were an amazing band to me. I thought they were very, very creative. Mm -hmm. So I, I sort of listened to things that were not in the mainstream. Okay, great. And uh, from all of the extraterrestrials that you've channeled, and I'm not going to ask you to name a favorite because we don't want them to feel chosen or not chosen, but uh, where would you first choose to spend a day on, with their planet, with their people? Where would you first go? I think the first place I would like to go is the, the ships that are around the planet. Mm -hmm. Any ship from Girk Pitmir. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And I'd like to sign me up. <laughs> I would love yeah, to. So I would really like to see them and meet. The, there's several different species that are in that alliance. And so if it's, you know, I would get to meet several different kinds of species. And that would be a really great thing instead of going to one planet where I might only meet one or two species, mm -hmm. uh, it would be good to meet several on a ship working together. That would be exciting to me. Yes, me too. Thank you for that. So can you please now explain the progression of your channeling since 2013? Um, how has it progressed? How has the style of channeling progressed? Uh, well, the, the various beings, how has that progressed? That's a very good question because when I first started channeling, I didn't know what channeling was and it just came through. It was pretty clear information from these two, from one of the Gurkvik Mir ships. Mm -hmm. It was a surprise to me and obviously um, after that I started to study uh, what channelers were. I started mm -hmm. to find out and and at first, I wasn't very careful, and so a lot of different kinds of weird information would be, be coming through, and not all of it was good. Mm. So after several months, I learned to start securing my, uh, my channeling sessions so that I would not be having negative beings coming in or tricksters or information that wasn't good. But still, it's a, it's a real progression. Every channeler, I believe, starts off and makes a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because you just aren't sure. This is something from the outside world, from something that you're not sure of what's really happening. And you get used to it. You get used to the energy. You start uh, praying for greater and and greater security, greater and greater purity, greater and greater uh, uh, information. And so as time goes on, you progress and you learn, after you make mistakes, you learn some lessons. And I've had a couple real doozy uh, mistakes where people w could have been very harmed, but we're not, thank God. But now it's much yes. more controlled. Mm -hmm. and now there's higher information because mm -hmm. they've actually opened me up to a greater informational uh, areas. So I appreciate that. And I, I'm so blessed to be a part of that because they allow me to become a part of that. Otherwise, I would not be there. Does that mean that they helped you would you say it was a matter of raising your vibration step by step? Well, that happened? Yes, part of it was vibration, but the part of it was what kind of information I could channel. I could only channel certain kinds of information to a point at the beginning, and then I was very limited. But now they have actually helped me to open up to greater amounts of information and mm -hmm greater areas. I, I am more uh, multifaceted now because of them, because mm -hmm. of how they have been working with me, and I appreciate that. Yes, and I think I'm at those beginning stages where I just have a certain amount of information that I channel, and I would like to get to that point also where you've reached. And yeah. 
it's a matter of, because you have been channeling consistently every day. Is that not true? Does that help, would you say, as well? I, I took a week off just recently from channeling, mm -hmm. and I didn't, didn't do any channeling at all, at all for eight days. And that's the first time that that happened for for the the five and seven, five and somewhat months that I've been channeling. So yes, I channel every single day, pretty much. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now, so what would you say is your greatest technique for protection? Is there any one thing you always go to before you begin? Um, yes, I always medit. Uh, I do prayers and meditation. Mm -hmm. What I usually do is I sit down and, uh, or I'll, I'll stand up, doesn't matter, and I'll say, thank you, God, Father Almighty, creator of all things. You are the main one I thank because you are the creator. So then I thank the angels, the aliens, and everyone. And then I ask for a pure, integral, honest, uh, informational session Mm -hmm. with wisdom and healing and whatever is necessary that, to go into that healing at that time and mm -hmm. for protection and for no tricksters. And I, I have quite a, a long list of things that I actually mm -hmm. go through. My laundry list of um, <laughs> protection mm -hmm. and um, requests. Okay. And, and I do a lot of thankfulness mm -hmm. for what, what is about to happen because it is, I give the glory to God, and I give the glory to those people that are actually giving the uh, information. Not, and, yeah. and I thank them that, that I'm able to be used. Which is a great lead-in to my next question. Um, as a Bible scholar, because you did study, um, what, say exactly what you were studying before I continue. I went to United Wesleyan College. And okay. It was a, sort of a... Methodist sort of base, mm -hmm. but a little bit more on the charismatic side because they believe in a little bit of speaking in tongues and healing and things of that nature. But it was not as a, a considered a holy roller kind of thing, but it was considered charismatic to a certain mm -hmm. extent. Okay. So how has, if you may, your relationship to God and your view of God developed since you've been channeling extraterrestrials, angels, etc., or has it? Yes, it has developed. I've realized, first of all, even before that it had changed, even before I started channeling, my view of God and religion had changed because I, I did not fit into it, and it did not, it did not, it did not, edify me in a in many ways and so yes. i had to realize that i was a spiritual person and not a religious person mm -hmm. and i did not believe in the in a lot of the things that the religious the churches uh were doing and so i sort of i did still go to church but i did not really invest mm -hmm. in all the things of the churches i did not um, want to give them money and I did not want to give them too much time anymore because my spirituality was helping others. My spirituality was to grow uh, my individuality and because I believe that's why God put us here is to be who we are meant to be. And they were not feeding that. They were, not, they were putting me in a box. Mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of watering the plant and fertilizing the plant to make it grow, they were putting it in a dark room and it was not growing. Mm -hmm. So I got myself out of the dark room and put myself in the spiritual light, in the spiritual energy. And I feel like I've grown a great deal. Um, now, I also, since I've been channeling, have changed as well. Mm -hmm. The spirit really moves when I talk sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's not really me talking. It's mm -hmm. them coming through, bringing through a line of pure spirituality that, at least I pray that it's pure, mm -hmm. that is coming from God himself at times. And I thank God for that because 
I see him as a very vast and unique individual, very, very big and has all the, uh, he, he is in everything. Yes. So, um, and uh, I think that religious views don't see him as big as I do sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they have limitations. So I'm thankful for that. A lot of people get confused from what my experience, if they're talking with extraterrestrials, it's either extraterrestrials or God. Somehow they don't know how to often combine the two. How do you understand your extraterrestrials, your extraterrestrial friends' understanding of God? Do they? Well, I think that we are all part of God. Mm -hmm. Every single individual has come from God in some way or another. Mm -hmm. So as you're talking to uh, extraterrestrials, you're also talking to a portion of God. Mm -hmm. He created them. He has their soul within them. Uh, every, not everybody believes that, but I do. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is part of all these people, all these aliens. And so why separate them? You, God is them. They, mm -hmm. God is in them. Now there are some negative beings that have rejected God. God may not be in them, but he created them originally some, somewhere down the line, and uh, they have just rejected that. But I see most individuals, most aliens that I talk to are God mm -hmm. in the sense that they are made by God. And they believe in God themselves in a way, do they not? In the good, the uh, Many of them talk about God, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's wonderful. So, do you get to ask your extraterrestrial friends questions? Like we ask you questions when you're channeling. Do, do they say, okay, Jim, do you have any questions for us? Yes, every now and then they do. Mm -hmm. And I, there are times when I channel by myself mm -hmm. because some people ask me to get information for them and they don't mm -hmm. want a channel session. So, they'll say, can you, they'll write me a note online or whatever and say, can you ask to her or can you ask somebody this question? And so I will sometimes just sit and ask for whoever knows the answer to these questions to help me answer them. And a lot of times it's to her, sometimes it's ish, sometimes it's um, Lakesh. Mm -hmm. it, there are different people that will come and answer those questions. Is, is there a particular race, um, thank you for that, is there a particular race you um, you feel the most kin with? Where would you say your own kinship belongs from all the races that you channel? That's a good question because there's a couple. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel very close to uh, the, the Pleiadians, I feel close to the Lyrans, I feel close to the Octorians. And many times um, there'll be a you yill or somebody. It depends on personalities as well. Sometimes somebody will come through from a race I never heard of, and I will feel very, very close to them because they brought with them some real wonderful energy, and and I'm able to relate to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now I'd like to ask you about Reiki because Reiki is part of your journey as well. From what I remember, you began Reiki as a prerequisite, not consciously, but it just happened that you started Reiki, and from Reiki it went to channeling, and then from Reiki, uh, you've also gone to Galactic Reiki. So I have two questions in that. One is, do you feel like if you hadn't done Reiki, Aside from the fact that you met Max through doing Reiki, aside from that, that's how that sort of connected. But do you think if you hadn't done Reiki, you would be doing channeling? That's one question. And the other is you've gone from the highest Reiki level to galactic Reiki, which Tukur taught you from the Lyrans. And where do you think the next step in that Reiki is going? Go all right. First of all, um, I learned Reiki because... Well, first I came to Reiki because I was a mess after losing my job and it calmed me down and I got interested in doing it because I could feel the energy. Mm -hmm. And when I started Reiki, it was very energetic for me. 
and I could feel the energy flowing through me. And I really don't think if I had uh, not started Reiki that I would ever have channeled. And the mm -hmm. reason it, it's flowing through me, it was awakening different parts of my psyche. And I was aware that there was some, uh, I was being in, intuitive and uh, there was information coming and, but I didn't realize that it was going to lead to channeling. Mm -hmm. When I was with Max, that was a, a relationship that was meant to be because Absolutely, I think so. if I had been first channeled with anybody else and, and think of that, mm. if it would have been anybody else, mm. they would have not started a site, they would have not recorded it. 99.9% uh, .9 chance that would all that information uh, that I channeled would be lost. And would I have started my own site? No. Would mm -hmm. I have started recording myself? No. Would I have started filming myself? No. Would I have made a site? No. And none of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. None of that would have happened. But Max was, he knew that the information was good. So he immediately started, I mean, as of the second time I ever channeled, it was recorded. Wow. The very second time. Wow. The first time was not, but the second time I channeled mm. in my whole life, it was recorded. And it was, he put it out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So my whole channeling career is, uh, is recorded. Every bit of it, almost. It's incredible. Sessions. Mm -hmm. My life from the very beginning, from May of 2013, it started, it was recorded because oh. I was channeling to Max and Max knew the information was good and knew that I was bringing forth uh, good information. So, yeah, that's incredible. Max is a, I, I interviewed Max a few weeks ago. He's a scientist, as you know, and a researcher. And so, thank goodness, I always refer to him as the hardware of your team and you the software. And they, you can't do one without the other. Yes, the, without the site, I mm -hmm. would not be a channeler like I am today. Yeah. I, I would just have probably maybe even lost interest, who knows, but this yeah. People needed my help through channeling, and I didn't know I could help people through channeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was something that I knew that could happen. I didn't mm -hmm. know that it was an occupation. I didn't know that, that people would want to talk to a channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all these things I learned from Max. Yeah. He, he gave me bizarre tapes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going... Who is this Bashar guy? Mm -hmm. He goes, he's channeling. Uh, 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 Daryl Lanka is channeling this this being named Bashar. So I was like, what? You know, I so I learned to understand what channeling was and what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So and it, and the whole thing came about rather quickly. Yes, it grew rather quickly, and it still continues to grow. Yes. And so now the second part of that question um, is about from going from doing Ushui Reiki to Galactic Reiki. Um, I don't know if you want to explain briefly what Galactic Reiki is for those who don't know, but where do you well, think going from there? Uh, we don't call it Galactic Reiki anymore. It's Galactic Energy Healing. Okay. Because it really isn't Reiki. Okay. So we call it, we changed the name to Galactic Energy Healing because... Okay. The symbols are not Reiki, uh, though they may, there may be some similarities there, mm -hmm. but the energy levels of the galactic energy healing are very much more, I, mm -hmm. just stronger, they are just stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people change people's lives to start learning galactic energy healing. And I thank uh, to Kerr and God for bringing that to us because mm -hmm. Um, without those symbols, uh, they all work, every single one of them, and they have all been proven to work. Mm -hmm. the energy that's within them and the attunements that are given for them change people because I've had so many people tell me that. Mm -hmm. And 
this is amazing. It's so much more powerful. So, um, and I was, I'm just amazed about it. Do you think that'll become more mainstream at some point? And is there another level to be bringing in after this? I think that this, we have written the manual now. Mm -hmm. And the manual will grow from here because we're going to put a lot of uh, other kinds of information in it that people want mm -hmm. to know, answer mm -hmm. a lot of other questions that uh, are around energy healing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <Better. Excuse me. laughs> energy healing so mm -hmm. but I think that uh, they're not going to add to the the galactic energy healing but now they want me to start teaching galactic sign language uh -huh. so we'll see how that works <laughs> okay there is a there is an energy modality called white time universal healing energy and it's basically <clears throat> you learn how to excuse me <clears throat> open up like a tunnel and connect to the extraterrestrials who are focused on that tunnel for healing. I think I've explained this to you before. And there is what's called the golden the golden movement. And I, I don't remember exactly how to do it, but they said that every extraterrestrial you meet, if you make this movement, this series of movements, like sign language, then it's protocol that they have to listen to what you have to say. It's, it's, it's like a protection and a protocol. And yes, I, I think of that every time you mention the sign language. And I think- yes, They've given me a couple of signs, <laughs> but in order for it to be a class, you have to at least have 20 or 25 signs, I would think. So okay. that hasn't happened yet, so okay. we'll see. Okay, and we have a question from Iana, who, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat now who would like to know about your musical background. You did touch on it briefly. And I want to ask also about your music and your music with John Lennon and your future of music in your life. Well, I started off being very musical from the very beginning. I, I, my parents got a piano when I was about, oh, maybe 10 or, or so. And I immediately started playing it and yeah. I didn't have any uh, piano lessons or anything, but I immediately started just fingering out musical melodies, and many of the, many of them I just made up, and so that was something that I really enjoyed doing. And um, and in school I was very musical. I was in the choir. I was in the band. I was in the even in the Broadway musicals that they mm. were having, and so music, music, music. Mm. And then I was in bands in high school. I was in uh, a singing group in college that traveled around uh, the Freedom Singers, and I was uh, then I started rock bands after that with Derek Knott uh, mm. in the early late seventies, early eighties, and we have several recordings that uh, mm -hmm. we went to producers in New York to listen to what they had to say and. Well, we never got anywhere with that, mm. but I think that was uh, because God saw that I had to do something else. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but when I started channeling, I told my guitar player about channeling, that I was channeling. He said, I know you've been channeling my life through your songs since I've known you. So wow. that was to me. And yeah. I told some other friends and amazingly i have not lost a single friend because i'm a channel that is to me amazing because uh i've heard stories mm -hmm. yeah so but it was that's just amazing to me but mm -hmm. I, yes the music is still out there and maybe someday it will be part of uh something that people can enjoy also, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. And you wrote songs for John Lennon. Yes. John Lennon gave me four songs mm -hmm. to put into reality, which I have done, mm -hmm. but I cannot find a producer for them because they need a certain sound and I don't have that sound. Mm -hmm. And they need a certain production and I don't have that production. 
Okay. And they are in their basic forms, but they are definitely John Lennon songs. Mm -hmm. And they are recorded. Max has a copy of them. I have a copy of the basic uh, recordings and the mm -hmm. vocals and everything. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's as far as we got. And I know that someday that somewhere that will be taken care of because John Lennon wants at least the one song. He was he's very adamant about the one song mm -hmm. he put into to be recorded and uh, played for the the world. So yeah, it's beautiful too. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So thank John. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I suppose. Uh, the right person will come along and help you finish that off, I'm assuming. Well, I had some offers from people, but I need to, to get in touch with uh, those people. They're mm -hmm. famous people, actually. That, yeah. That I, I don't know them. People know them and are going to introduce me to them mm -hmm. at some point. But I, I'm like, how is this going to happen? So we'll see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to know, um, well, let me ask you a question, another question from Iana. She wanted to know, is there anything that happened when you were young that was unexplainable that you are able to explain now? Any kind of spiritual experience, I suppose, or visitation? There was, there was some things that were happening when I was very young that should have given me a clue mm -hmm. to the fact that I had uh, psychic energies and powers. There, I did went to Bible camp from the pres when I was a Presbyterian, mm -hmm. very young, very very early in my life, and they had a séance, and the séance mm -hmm. went way way wrong because the leader of the séance was actually a black witch. She oh. actually had a black a satanic Bible and the whole nine yards. And uh, during this séance, the the there was a lot of very unusual things that happened. The screens were ripped off the cabin. The wow. uh, many weird and unexplained mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But uh, the flame in front of me, there was all candles in front of the five part. And there was, I was sitting in front of one of the arms that had a candle lit in front of it. And my flame just started flaring up really bright. Mm -hmm. And they, mm -hmm. you know, she turned over since she lost total control of the oh. seance, she turned it over to me, and somehow, I don't know how, I brought it back into, uh, but there are many weird things happened that night. And mm -hmm. I, when we left the cabin, there was several rings around the moon. Wow. So it was a very weird experience, and a very, a very supernatural one, and but everything turned out okay but they gave me the credit for it and i said no I, it was god that did that mm -hmm. so but uh, i was able to bring it back into control mm -hmm. but yes and i couldn't explain that then but i mm -hmm. can explain it now because i realized that i was actually very psychic all through my life and i mm -hmm. tried to hide that and tried to suppress that mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you explain the type of channeling you do as far as, because I know there are a lot of people who would like to channel, they're trying to channel, and they say, well, um, not everybody says this, but many feel like they want to be like you, how you channel with all of your multifaceted aspects and abilities. Um, so there's this question about conscious channeling, trans channeling, um, is it a progression that people start with conscious and then go to trance, or it's not necessary to, to go? I think, personally, I think that every channeler is different, mm -hmm. and that I am more of a conscious and semi-conscious channeler. I have mm -hmm. gone into trance a couple times, but not often. Mm -hmm. And I think that the people that are prone to chan uh, channeling in trance mm -hmm. start that pretty early in their career. I think that they start doing that really early, okay. or if they really, um, if uh, they really want to be trans channelers, they learn, um, they pray about that, and 
it's given to them by God, uh, by a gift from God. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily want to be a trans channeler, but mm -hmm. I do, I do go into trance maybe one in a hundred times. Mm -hmm. But I go into sub, uh, a semi-conscious channeling, which means that I can hear what's going on, mm -hmm. but don't always remember it. Okay. When I come out of the session, I know that I had heard everything. But mm -hmm. when I when I look at the person that I was channeling with, I'm going, I can't remember a thing. Mm -hmm. Unless they say something to me, mm -hmm. they say, do you remember them saying this? And mm -hmm. I'll say, yes. Okay, I now that you mentioned that, I do remember that. Okay. But I, I can only remember it if they bring it up. Okay. So I just want to say to everybody, and maybe you can help me, it's okay if you're a conscious channeler, right? I mean, there's nothing... It's all right. The thing is, sometimes with conscious channelers, they don't believe they're really channeling. Mm -hmm. They think that it's coming from, from themselves. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this. If mm -hmm. you are channeling, you will start to talk in a way that is not like yourself. Mm -hmm. Even though you may know the information that is coming out, mm -hmm. it's going to be said in a way that you wouldn't say it usually. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's going to be said in a way that the person or people that are listening to you will mm -hmm. understand it the best. Yes. Because that is who is coming through. Yes. So that is the way they want it to be said and heard. Thank you. Now, there, are, yes. there are ways that they do many layers of consciousness through their channeling. I don't know how they do that, but I've been mm -hmm. told that it comes through in layers and you listen to it one time in this recording and you'll uh -huh. hear and you'll listen to it another time in this recording and you hear something else you, or something, something better yes. so this is how they work you are not the one speaking otherwise that would never happen mm -hmm. that would never happen we don't, as humans, do not speak in layers, usually. That, that's pretty incredible. I, I noticed with my own channeling that I, I noticed that, wow, I, I never would have said it that way. I never I would have thought of it that way. And so even though I do go through that, it's probably just me kind of a syndrome. <laughs> but then I realize it can't be because of just what you explained. So thank you for explaining that. Exactly. People, I say, are you saying it in a different way than the, you would normally say it? Oh, yeah, but I know the information. Yeah. Let it go. Just let it come through. Do not be part of it. Do not. That was the one, one thing you have to learn as a channeler. You mm -hmm. have to let whoever's coming through do their thing. You cannot be part of it. You cannot add your two cents. It ruins the whole thing. It changes. <laughs> meaning because mm -hmm. you have become a part of it that is not meant to be well so, well wouldn't you say that that they, oh forgive me go ahead repeat that please i'm sorry I said, that is a lesson that i learned and okay was a hard lesson okay to learn. well don't you think though also that they use our own knowledge to to give their answers yes but a lot of times you'll want to interject what you want to say right now mm-hmm and they're saying, no, I, I just leave it go. So mm. I've okay. learned to let it go. Okay, thank you. So now I'd like to ask you about, if you can give us a little advice, because you've, um, you've developed a very successful business, and I know that you, in the beginning, you never wanted to deal with money. You didn't really want to ask people for money. You always gave people so many breaks because you just, your heart was bigger. You just couldn't turn people's, knee down but in the, also in the meantime you've developed a very successful business so is there any advice i would think consistency has a lot to do with it that you do it consistently or what other advice would you give for business well first of all do a little homework and find out who what, who's charging what for what mm -hmm. and where how long they've been doing it and everything of that nature but what happened with me is this. 
in January of 2014, uh, Max said, Jim is starting to do personal sessions and he's charging $95 an hour. And my eyes, <laughs> and my jaw came open because he didn't let me know ahead of time that he was mm -hmm. going to announce that. Mm -hmm. You know what? He knew that I would not do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So he did not give me the option mm -hmm. of deciding. Mm -hmm. he, so uh, I think that was from God as well. <laughs> yes. In some way, because I would have never started that, my business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But started it for me. So I will say this, for those of you do, that, that do not like to deal with money, mm -hmm. first of all, look and see who's doing what with money and, and how, how, and how long have you been doing this and mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But talk to your best friend who's, who knows about what you're doing, mm -hmm. talk to somebody close to you and get their opinion. Mm -hmm. If I get a couple other opinions of people that are close by or within your group, because they know how good you are, and they will be honest, I would hope, in letting mm -hmm. you know how much they think you should charge. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now I would like to ask you, what was your one of your most profound? experiences so far with channeling, whether private or public, if you have... The introduction of Elijah. Okay. Elijah came into my life from, and he said, he started talking to me, and um, the way I was introduced to Elijah was in a very unusual way. Mm -hmm. I was doing a, a, a regression with Helga Ron. Mm-hmm. I was doing, and my higher self's name was, um, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's all right. Yeah. Yes. I, I can't think of it right now. It's, 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 <laughs> but, um, he's still there, but mm -hmm. during that session, I guess they didn't want me to say his name. So okay. during that session, Elijah came through and said, I am going to replace your higher self. Mm -hmm. and and it was Malachi by the way okay. um, Malachi was my higher self and now Malachi was stepping aside and letting Elijah come through mm -hmm. and Helga was there trying to heal my eyes doing mm -hmm. these regressions to heal yeah. my eyes and these things are coming through and they're not part of that, that healing for my eyes and mm -hmm like going what's going on here you know this is not this is not really what I was uh, intending to do but guess what those recordings are very valuable because that was the, my introduction to my higher self which mm -hmm. is Malachi, and mm -hmm. also letting letting me know that I'm mm -hmm. Elijah coming and from that point on Elijah sp was speaking to me, and mm -hmm. we did not have a really solid relationship at first. He's very different than I am, and I don't want mm -hmm. to say anything negative, but we did not <laughs> see eye to eye on many things. And mm -hmm. I'm going, am I going insane? Am I like having this, uh, am I having a dual personality or something going on here? <laughs> but, um, eventually, we came to some compromises, mm -hmm. and now he's part of who I am. And did he tell you why he came to be your higher self? Yes, he did. This was the time it predicted in the Bible that Elijah will return. Mm -hmm. And so he is returning. I see. So this, this kind of brings me into the probably the final question of, so where do you go from here? What are your future plans? How do you see your own future developing with everything and with Elijah? In which way? That is a good question because mm -hmm. I see that there is a need for Elijah's words. Mm -hmm. That the world needs Elijah to speak to them because God is speaking through him 
and telling the people that he wants them to be with him. And he, you don't need an intercessor and you don't need a lot of uh, rules and regulations to talk to God. You can just mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. you can know him. You can call on him. You can be with him and, and know him without mm -hmm. any form of outside influence. Mm -hmm. And this is something that some religions do have, that they believe that, but others do not. Mm -hmm. But he has come to purify Mm -hmm. uh, what God is saying in some ways. Mm -hmm. What is being said in the churches is being diluted, and he's come to purify that. Okay, so in which way? Uh, uh, do you see your future? I know you've mentioned you see yourself like speaking in very large groups. How do you see that developing? Are you going to move away from? No, I see that in my dreams, but I do yeah. not see that when I'm in third dimension, I, I, yeah. don't, I don't know if that will ever happen. I sort of just am letting it go. I'm letting whatever happens, happens. But there are now people trying to get me to come different places. They're mm -hmm. trying to uh, get money to fund me to go, come mm -hmm. to Australia, come to uh, Germany, come to Canada. Mm -hmm. That it's starting. I'm starting to hear those people talk about it, mm -hmm. and but they, you know, Elijah's not necessarily part of that, but he will be, okay, but in some way. So mm -hmm. it might morph into something else. I don't know. Okay, so our chance to have you in private sessions may <laughs> run out at some point. Do <laughs> you think that's true? Um, I will always be doing some private sessions, I think, but they okay. might be less. Yeah. Okay. So but right now I'm fully packed. So I know, I know. So here's a question that I was asked when I was channeling. Um, do we need to talk to ETs? What is the benefit? And um, be my last question. Um, do we need to? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we just need to talk to God and spiritual beings. But I think that our curiosity about uh, ETs is important. I think that they are coming through to let us know that they're friendly and not harmful and mm -hmm. that uh, they're giving us uh, an indication of what first contact may be like. Inter being introduced is going to be a lot easier than we thought. So talking to them may be beneficial in just knowing that they are friendly and that they are there for us. And they support a lot of the things mm -hmm. that we're doing. I think that is probably the major reason for us to talk to them. And thank you. And do you think they give us glimpses, like a, like a travel agency would give yes. us pictures of what the next dimension would be like and kind of inspiration? Yes. Yeah. I think yeah. they definitely give us glimpses of where we are in mm -hmm. the scheme of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. the neighborhood being the universe. So mm -hmm. I think they give us a little glimpse of where we are and who we are. And where we, where we could, where we will be destined to go. So they give us where we could go. They're yeah. not saying that this is where we are going to go necessarily because uh, the future is only a probable future. We have to make the decisions to make it a real future. But you, if you believe what they say, all mm -hmm. space and time is mm -hmm. happening at once, mm -hmm. then it's already happened. And they really know a little bit about that, but mm -hmm. they can't really tell us because they have to let it happen organically. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Is there anything you would like to tell all of us that I haven't asked you anything that I I just want you to know that I'm a very third dimensional person. Mm -hmm. I have I still have my friends and I still like to do third dimensional things. Mm -hmm. And this has been a great change in my life, channeling and I still do Reiki. Mm -hmm. 
and I still have regular Reiki customers or clients, however you mm -hmm. want to call them. Mm -hmm. But I, I just thank God for all the things that have happened because without God's leading and guidance, I wouldn't be here. So thank, thank God for that. So, uh, and if anybody wants to get a hold of me, you can give them my email address. <laughs> okay. Well, I think uh, for those who don't know you very well, if you go to hucolo.org, ucolo.org, you will see Jim's profile there and his channeling and what he asked for it, if you would like to do that. Um, I felt a tremendous amount of love just talking with you like this, uh, just your energy, just the, just, it's difficult to describe. So I know that um, it's very wonderful for anybody who gets a chance to spend any time with you uh, like that, and for any reason. Well, I, I really love what I do, <laughs> and it really is helpful to a lot of people, and that, that I'm very happy with. Yeah, happy about. yes, absolutely. That's your, that's your, Heart, you know, to always be helping people. So thank you so much. It was wonderful to spend this time and thank you for your answers. And we will be seeing you on a next, uh, the next possible Saturday. Yes. Webinar. Okay. I will be there. Many blessings. Thank you so much again. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye. Much love. Much love. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.